people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. As India commemorates 75 years of its independence, a new script is being written on the economic front. India recently surpassed the United Kingdom to become the fifth biggest economy. The country's nominal GDP in the first quarter clogged over 854 billion US dollars against the United Kingdom's 816 billion US dollars in the same period. Combined with the Atmanirbhar Bharat mission or a resolve for self-reliance and the Make in India program, India aims to transform itself into a global manufacturing and design export hub. Industrialists across the spectrum predict that by the end of the decade, India will enter the rarefied air of the top three economies of the world. South Asia Focus brings you a detailed story on the subject. As India commemorates 75 years of its independence, a new script is being written on the economic front. A tripartite foundation of a determined political will to take difficult decisions for the greater good, speedy implementation of fiscal objectives, and a science and technology-based development model have propelled India to the coveted top five economies of the world. India recently surpassed the United Kingdom to become the fifth biggest economy. The country's nominal GDP in the first quarter clocked over 854 billion USD against the United Kingdom's 816 billion USD in the same period. Among all major economies, India's growth at 3.83% in the three-year period is the highest, followed by the United States at 3.78%, Canada at 2.58%, the UK at 1.06%, France at 0.68%, and Japan at negative 1.27%. What is even more significant in this achievement is the fact that India reached these numbers at a time when the world was still struggling with the economic fallout of COVID-induced shocks. The Prime Minister used the challenge of the pandemic as an opportunity of the multiple rounds of economic reforms, which covered vast sectors of the economy, which has deeply enhanced the productivity, long-term productivity of the economy. Industrialists across the spectrum predict that by the end of the decade, India will enter the rarefied air of the top three economies of the world. Before we dive deeper into the numbers that led the country to this milestone, let's take a step back and ask some questions. How did India reach here? Was the Indian economic structure resilient enough to absorb COVID-induced shocks? Was the government pro-business or was it more focused on regulatory compliances? The answer to all three questions can be traced to the immediate aftermath of the COVID lockdowns, wherein employment numbers, economic growth, and consumption had halted the world over. While countries around the world, in panic, doled out billions under the guise of stimulus packages to sustain their economies, Indian policy maintained a traditional, conservative approach that ensured that fundamentals of the economy were nurtured, and a welfare net was also in place to assist the poor. Throughout the pandemic, India was one country where we remained prudent and we uh, did a number of reforms without going into excessive uh, spending, which could have hurt us. India relied on increased CapEx funding so that employment generation and infrastructure development took center stage while inflationary headwinds were countered. The government of India announced a special economic package of 267 billion USD and gave a clarion call to build a self-reliant India. This package was not to be confused as a mere bailout, but instead were supportive measures that created a business ecosystem that had the right incentives to thrive on its own and result in trickle-down benefits to the working population. The major components of the business support package included financial measures for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. 
Instead of providing cash handouts, the additional support was provided in the form of concessional credits to farmers, as well as a credit facility for street vendors. India's incredible pace of immunization proved instrumental in its economic resurgence. After a sharp contraction in the first quarter since the COVID outbreak, and a moderate contraction in the following months, the Indian economy registered a sharp V-shaped growth trajectory. The Production Link Incentive Scheme PLI, was launched to develop an incentive-based model to boost domestic manufacturing. Analysts believe that PLI can contribute up to 4% to the GDP annually in terms of incremental revenue. India's PLI scheme has yielded bumper dividends as a large number of industries have shown a massive rise in the scale of their production. India's toy industry is one such example in which there has been a huge turnaround. It is a shining story of importer to exporter and a bright example of brand India at work. Digital India led from the front during the COVID distress when India distributed nearly 5 billion USD in cash benefits to the impoverished, direct to their accounts. The country was already on a digital first trajectory with one of the highest volumes of digital transactions in the world when the pandemic struck and further propelled the use of contactless digital technology. India is now clocking around 100 million digital transactions a day with a volume of 67 billion USD about a five times jump from 2016. A World Economic Forum 2020 report says the use of digital technology led to savings of nearly 23 billion USD, 98% of this by eliminating erroneous beneficiaries. Getting the basics right, India has ensured a strong bedrock of tools that a country needs to make quantum leaps in the economic growth of its people. A business-friendly government is taking decisions to maximize the potential of its workforce and provide companies with the right tools to thrive in this business-friendly ecosystem. India's mixed economy model has defeated all economic templates and has set an example before the world. Owing to leaps taken by the country through this road, economists predict that India will become one of the top three economies in the world. What it is telling you in the broader context, leaving aside the UK the specific thing, is that India is moving up the power scale. And uh, according to uh, my earlier forecast, by uh, 28 to 30, we will become the third largest uh, country. Those who have invested in the India story have more to look forward to. The PM Gati Shakti is a master plan for coordinating implementation of infrastructure projects with around 16 ministries on board to coordinate seamless transportation of goods and other services. The scheme's rapid implementation is moving at the same pace of growth as the country's rapidly accelerating economy. It is also reducing travel time for people across the country. The scheme has over 900 layers of central ministries data and 654 layers of states data, which are available at the click of a button. Gone are the days of running pillar to post for clearance from different ministries. Central databases have now made the old style of functioning redundant. In addition to emphasis on building infrastructure projects like highways, bridges, ports and airports, the government is also giving priority to build special economic zones to provide an internationally competitive and hassle-free environment for exports. Give City is a planned business district in Gujarat having multi-service special economic zones. Built on 886 acres, it offers a competitive edge to financial services and technology-related activities. To further accelerate economic growth, the government also launched Startup India, a flagship initiative with the agenda to actively support startups and entrepreneurs. Today, India boasts being the third largest startup ecosystem across the world, with over 100 unicorns and more than 60,000 startups operating within the country. India's position in the Global Innovation Index has improved from 81st in 2015 to 46th in 2022. इतने कम समय में हम 81 से 46 तक आए हैं लेकिन यहां रुकना नहीं है अभी और ऊपर जाना है आज भारत में रिकॉर्ड संख्या में पेटेंट हो रहे हैं नए-नए इनोवेशन हो रहे हैं कंबाइंड विद द एटमोनर बियर बरात मिशन और अ रिजॉल्व फॉर सेल्फ रिलायंस एंड द मेक इन इंडिया प्रोग्राम 
India aims to transform itself into a global manufacturing and design export hub. Consumption, investment, and exports, which represent the three key engines of the Indian economy, have all grown strongly at about 26%, 20%, and 15%, respectively, over the last year. The growth in investment of 20% over last year signals that investors are now comfortable to start investing in the Indian economy. Reduction in restrictive compliances, a strong infrastructure foundation, an educated workforce, and one of the largest markets in the world sends a strong message to investors around the world. India is open for business. Moving on. While months-long crisis has severely impacted the lives of people belonging to every strata of Sri Lankan society, it has taken an unprecedented toll on those who were living in obscurity owing to their disabilities. Dependent on their families, they are now staring at a dark future as the country struggles to pull itself out of the deep economic crisis. As the blazing midday sun beats down on his back, Singaram lifts himself over his peanut field, strikes his spade against the earth and begins to dig. The 44-year-old Tamil labourer has been tending to his patch of land for just under two months in Mullai Thivu, a town on Sri Lanka's northeastern coast that is still recovering from the impact of country's bloody 26-year war. On January 14, 2009, Four months before the war came to an end, Singaram was wounded by a shell attack and moved to hospital in nearby Uthukudweerupu. When an air strike hit the hospital, Singaram lost both his legs and was wounded in one of his arms. Mullaitivu is located in Sri Lanka's northern province, which is almost entirely populated by Tamils, many of whom were severely affected during the war. It is less than 20 kilometers from Mulli Vaikal, where an estimated 70,000 to 169,000 Tamils were killed in the war's final offensive. Today, 13 years after the war, the impacted Tamil population is being dealt a second blow by Sri Lanka's economic crisis, the worst it has faced since independence. Runaway inflation has left many of them unable to afford basic necessities, with several people already unable to work. Since <laughs> Santipan Kalachelvi has a similar story to tell. The 38-year-old housewife lost an arm and a leg in shell attack while she and her family were displaced from their native village of Kumula Munai in the final months of civil war. The resulting disabilities like Kalachelvi entirely unable to work and confined to carrying out household duties including sweeping, washing clothes and helping her children with their homework. After being widowed in 2012, she was left totally dependent on her mother, who works as a daily wage labourer. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees estimated in 2003 that more than 84,000 Tamils fled to neighboring India during the course of the civil war, while 800,000 Tamils were displaced by the conflict. These are not two exclusive cases. There are hundreds in Sri Lanka whose life have been affected massively by the economic crisis that has dawned over the island nation. Months of helplessness has pushed such people to the brink. And with little light appearing at the end of the tunnel, observers fear that food and cash-driven crisis could prompt another tragedy in their lives and this time around 
they might not end up being the fortunate ones. Time now for Asia this week, the stories from across the continent. Vietnamese car maker Vinfast began handing its first batch of 100 electric sport utility vehicles over to local customers with US deliveries of the vehicle due to begin as soon as December. Vinfast, which began operations in 2019, is gearing up to expand in the US market where it hopes to compete with legacy automakers and startups with its two all-electric SUVs, the VF8 and VF9, including battery leasing to reduce the purchase price. Winfast, part of Win Group, will start shipping cars overseas in November and customers will have cars delivered to them as soon as December. The company has registered almost 65,000 reservations globally and it expects to sell 750,000 EVs per year by 2026, starting with the VF8 and VF9 all-electric SUVs. In March, Winfast said it would build a production plant in North Carolina with an initial projected capacity of 150,000 EVs a year. It tapped banks in July to raise at least 4 billion US dollars in funding for the project. The VF8 and VF9 vehicles will start at 42,200 US dollars and 57,500 US dollars respectively for US customers, excluding the cost to lease the electric battery. Bidding funeral to a deceased loved one is the most crucial ritual one has to perform in their lifetime. The after-death rituals have evolved over time due to alterations in social structures and an increase in the number of single-person households. To add to the cause and make funerals memorable, an exhibition was recently organized in Tokyo, where a number of companies offering funeral services and items showcase their products. The changes in social structure and the coronavirus pandemic have made Japanese companies develop services that are more compact and less formal. The Arikata project is a venture jointly produced by the Mintera division and Rokomedo that offers memorable items and products that can be passed on to the next generation by placing a memento of the deceased and a message in a wooden box. The main objective behind the idea is to connect the thoughts and feelings of loved ones for the deceased. コンパクトにすることが目的ではないんですが、どうやったらその自分たちのその思いとか、自分たちのその生きたその考えを含めて伝えることができるかっていうことで、まあたくさんそういうタッチポイントを思い出してもらえるそのタッチポイントを作ること
This is a chopstick manufacturer firm in Fukui Prefecture in Japan. These beautiful chopsticks are decorated with traditional crafts with wakasa nori written on them. Wakasa nori to imasu no wa ano tamago to kai kai gara o tsukatta ano togi dashi to imashite nanso ni mo urushi o nori kasanete toide nori kasanete toide sore o gendai fu ni arrange shiteru ということ nat. インバウンドだけではなくてですね、国内のお客様も含めて買い物ができないような状況ですので、やはりあの早く落ち着いてですね、あのまた普段のように戻っていただいて、あの私どものお箸を愛していただけたらなというふうに思っています。The Japanese knife is popular with foreign tourists. The beautiful knife is manufactured by company in Tsubame Sanjo, Niigata Prefecture, known for its many local factories. The texture of the wood gives a warm impression. This watch is made of wood and has a pattern of wooden rings. The picture on the surface is designed with different colors of wood. Japanese traditional crafts have always been attracting foreign tourists and visitors who are mesmerized by the beauty of Japanese culture and traditions. Moving on. The Indian state of Odisha has brought to stage some of the most mesmerizing dance and musical festivals that speak volumes of the culture and traditions of the country. Organized in the honor of classical dancer and musician, the Guru Keluchiran Mohapatra, the Keluchiran Mohapatra Award Festival is held every year in Bhubaneswar city of Odisha, where artists present their crafts and are felicitated for their contribution to the cultural scenario of India. We take a look at the event. The atmosphere of the Rabindra Mandap in Bhubaneswar city of Odisha reverberated with the symphony of melodious classical numbers as a number of artists from all over the country presented their craft on this prestigious platform. The scene was witnessed at the 28th edition of the OMC Guru Keluchuran Mohapatra Award Festival an event which promotes and honors artists who are contributing to the Indian classical dance and music scenario. ये जो OMC Guru Kaluchan Mahapatra Award Festival है उसका ये खासियत है कि हमारे गुरुजी Guru Kaluchan Mahapatra जी cinema, music, theatre, dance के साथ जुड़े हैं तो उसी क्षेत्र से जितने भी कलाकार हैं उनको जूरी के माध्यम से चयन करके फिर बाबा के नाम पे मतलब गुरुजी के नाम पे अवार्ड दिया जाता है उनको हर साल और ये 28 ईयर है और हर साल बाहर से बहुत सारे कलाकार लोग यहाँ आते हैं और जिस समय उनका कला का प्रदर्शन करते हैं। This year's program included a diverse confluence of music, dance and art performances. The inaugural evening witnessed a mesmerizing musical performance by Pandit Ronu Majumdar who played the flute and Ustad Taufik Qureshi who was on the djembe. Another notable performance was that of Padma Shri Awardi Geeta Chandran and her ensemble Natya Vriksha Dance Collective. The ensemble presented a new version of Bharat Natyam where traditional moves were performed on western classical tracks. Bharat Natyam ki vocabulary ko rakhte hue Ritu Samhar jo Kalidas ka hai uska content rakhte hue music leking humne western classical music use kiya Tchaikovsky ka. To isme humne बहुत जगह इसको इसकी प्रस्तुति करी है और बहुत लोगों ने सराहा है तो हमने कहा ऐसे मंच में उसको करने से कैसा रहेगा हम भी थोड़े से इसमें थे लेकिन आपने तो देखा किस तरीके से ऑडियंस को ये बहुत अच्छी लगी गुरु केलुचरण म्यूजिक एंड डांस फेस्टिवल नॉट ओनली इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर आर्टिस्ट टू प्रेजेंट देयर क्राफ्ट बट ऑल्सो प्ले इज अ मेजर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन स्प्रेडिंग अवेयरनेस अबाउट द कल्चर एंड हेरिटेज ऑफ उड़ीसा ऑन वेरियस नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल प्लेटफॉर्म्स Gurus hold a significant position in the Indian social hierarchy and value system. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.